Master of Queen of the Miraculous Medal Parish, Father Tim McDonald, and uh, chaplain at Lumen Christi, and uh, priest at St. John's, Father Brian Lenz. Welcome to the show. Good Thanks, to be Bart. on the show. And uh, everything I said about you is, uh, well, it's true for a little while longer because something's happening. That's right. I will be finishing my assignment as uh, chaplain at the school and will be beginning a new assignment as a pastor out at St. Robert Bellarmine in Flushing and uh, pastor at um, Good Shepherd Parish in Montrose to the, to the north of that beginning in July. So it's coming awesome. up quick. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you go from no parish to two. Mm. Yeah, it's a big change. I, I presume that I'll be learning a lot, but eight years in Jackson has been just an awesome opportunity. Certainly learn well from the veterans around here. Mm. So I know that I have them uh, on the line as well in case I have questions. I'm sure they'll be willing to regale me with all the stories about how to be a brand new pastor and what mm. not to do. Oh yeah, there's probably an envelope in the drawer of the uh, rectory from the past uh, from your process when you get there that has the secrets. I'm, sh I'm yeah. sure, yeah, oh. yes. So uh, when you came to Jackson, uh, did you think you were going to be here this long? I did not, no. I originally assumed that I would be in Jackson for about three or so mm -hmm. years, but my time here has been extended when the bishop asked me to become the chaplain at Lumen Christi. So it's mm -hmm. been very sort of a rare opportunity for me to stay in the same town for the first eight years of my priesthood. I don't know of another priest in the diocese who has had that opportunity, so. It's one of many ways that you are so unique. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and where, what's your hometown? Originally grew up in Okemos. So St. Mm -hmm. Martha Parish was my home parish growing up. My parents still live there and I have two siblings that are still in the Lansing area. Nice, so you'll be even, well, you'll be about the same distance. Plus or minus, it's yeah. maybe a little longer to Flushing, but about the same distance from Lansing. Well, great, uh, people have loved having you here. We wish you the best. I'm sure you'll come back and see us. Absolutely. Yeah. And Father Tim McDonald is the longest serving pastor in the uh, history of Queen of the Miraculous Metal Parish. And I have the gray hair and wrinkles <laughs> to prove it. <laughs> yes. How long has it been now? I came here in 2010. Wow. That's awesome. So did you think you were going to be here this long? No, no, no. I'd only been a priest for 10 years and I'd been moved five times. Mm -hmm. And I'd been in my last parish for two and a half years when the bishop said, I'm going down to Jackson, just like Johnny Cash sang it. And <laughs> I said, well, why don't you just lose my number? After you send me there, <laughs> lose my number. And so far he has. So it's nice. been a great partnership all these years. Oh, well, great. Uh, I think the community has been blessed uh, by your longtime presence. I hope it continues uh, The feeling much is longer. mutual. Yes. So uh, we've got a special event coming up on uh, Sunday that you wanted to uh, let all our viewers know about. It's happening well, at your school. With Father Brian leaving, we wanted to do things up in a special way. So we said, how could we send Father Brian Lenz out of Jackson with God's blessing and our thanks? And so this Sunday is the Feast of Corpus Christi, as you can see on your screen. That's Latin for the body and blood of Jesus, where we celebrate uh, the real presence of our Lord in Holy Communion. Normally we go to St. Joseph on Waterloo and have an outdoor Eucharistic procession together, but uh, we wanted to do it up this year and uh, to honor our Lord and Father Brian for his service to our Lord here at Lumen Christi. And so that's why we're all going out there instead. Three o'clock this Sunday, June the 2nd, Father Brian is gonna lead it and preach it. And we're gonna march with Jesus all around that football track. Probably not as fast as the track team does. <laughs> <laughs> so will this be your last sermon? Uh, probably not no. quite last sermon. Okay. I'll be preaching my last weekend here. June 30th will be my last Sunday here in Jackson. Okay, so you'll be, have a chance to do your goodbyes. Cause, yes. Yeah. Um, but there'll be a little reception after the Mass mm -hmm. at Lumen Christi for you. Right there. Everything mm -hmm. all in one place. One-stop shopping. <laughs> I said we want to do it up, but it has to be simple. So the Feast of Corpus Christi, uh, it's a long... Uh, time feast it goes back 1264 a.d oh yeah that's before a priest, our time. a priest who doubted the real presence of jesus in holy communion was celebrating mass for some pilgrims north of rome and as he was praying he didn't believe the bread and wine would become jesus body and blood but uh god does strange things in miraculous and mysterious ways and the, the consecrated host bled in his hands uh, the pope urban the fourth was nearby came to see the priest in all the bloody cloth and uh, declared a miracle, and uh, the procession started the next year, been going on ever since. Have we heard any stories from this priest who doubted and had the, the host literally bleed in his hands? Did he 
Describe. He was on his way to Rome to ask to be dispensed. He wanted to leave his ministry really? because he said, I can no longer do that which I do not believe. Uh, but his faith was restored. Faith in the Eucharist throughout the church was restored. And uh, we're really doing this up this year because in Indianapolis in July, they're having a nationwide Eucharistic Congress where there's going to be four processions like this, not just going around a football track, but heading to Indianapolis from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And so we wanted to do this in concert with them in celebration of this, especially because we're living in an age when many people don't have faith in God and certainly aren't obedient to church teaching. And we have found that many people in the church don't believe in Holy Communion. They just think it's a, a remembrance or a, a fellowship. Symbol, a symbol. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a very inspirational story. I never heard about that. I, I did not know. We've been keeping it from you. It must be a secret. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a secret. It's just for the priests. It's just... It, it's We're letting it out. This is breaking news <laughs> on JTV. There was a Eucharistic miracle in 1264. Are there any pictures? i got to see well, pictures. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and this summer, I think it's pretty interesting. We uh, we're going to get a new uh, a new saint or uh, oh, Carlo Acutis. Yes, a, what a an teenage, awesome awesome story. He's a kid, mm -hmm. or he, he's passed away. Yes, What's he lived his? from 1991 to 2006. Died of leukemia at the age of 16. Uh, but I was just reading the other day where he converted his mother's Hindu nanny that she hired to watch over him because he had to take him to mass every day, and then he converted that Hindu man's mother. And uh, so just so many miracles attributed to him, both during his life and now since his death. And in an age when young people are kind of wandering and wondering what is truth and what has value, uh, he's really going to speak to them. Yeah, it's an amazing story. You sent that story uh, out in the, the email, newsletter. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I, I did not know. It's like... We've been keeping that a secret from you, too. <laughs> yeah, no. Bart, you have, to, I, you have to read more media. <laughs> but it, was, uh, it was a fascinating story. People look it up this guy he was like a, I mean he's a modern saint he's a computer coder mm -hmm. he was 15 mm -hmm. he was like incredibly uh, devout and holy as a kid yes and then he gets leukemia and it's oh my gosh of all people to get leukemia and he died and he said he would die young he understood that he, and he accepted that. it wow. and his parents did not practice the faith he brought them back into the church as oh. well, and then dragged them all over Europe to various sites of Eucharistic miracles. He, he, and he performed miracles. Oh, they're, the, the, the to Pope. be a saint of the Catholic Church, you have to have two, two official miracles that have been attributed to that person's intercession after they have passed. Wow, amazing. Father Brian's gonna have three. Well, that's inspiration for you. Well, remains to be seen. I, I hopefully have many years to live yet, but you know what, one day, <laughs> please God will, that we all be saints. This job will do you in, I don't know. <laughs> What do you know about these parishes you're going to? Not very much. Huh? I visited uh, Flushing and uh, Montrose for the first time probably three or four weeks ago and have been meeting with the current pastor, the outgoing pastor, to help you know make the transition smooth. But all of the folks that I have met thus far have been just wonderful, so I'm hoping that the community is uh, a good fit, and I presume it will be. But do they have a brewery? That's a great question. Uh, you're from well, Flint, brother. so this is this more. is Genesee County. So this is my old neck of the woods. Oh, and, Genesee uh, Cream Ale. Everything has to be consumed in a forty-ounce container in a brown paper bag. <laughs> <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, big summer at Queens. You've got vacation Bible school. All kinds uh, of things. Youth that, group. That's exactly it, and that's not just Queens. This is. Uh, you know, this procession represents the Queen, St. John's, and St. Mary's have now come together mm -hmm. as an official grouping, just like we have the Jackson Catholic Schools, now we have the Jackson Catholic grouping of the parishes. And so this is our first effort to share a staff person and a program where Jake Gerber, I hope we'll bring him on here, and uh, okay. he'll inform you because we're keeping other secrets from you, you that we want new, you to know you have about. You have your own st a staff person for all the parishes? So he is working for all of the churches. Who is it? Jake Gerber. He, oh. uh, he just started. He just moved here. We hired him on a nationwide search. And so his job is to bring together the Catholic school kids, the public school kids, the homeschool kids, the virtual school kids, mm -hmm. all together. Uh, because youth group is really... Everybody remembers it from their youth, but it's really not been happening for the last several years in Jackson. Kind of dwindled. Hmm. Interesting. So you're, you're too old to join. <laughs> from, uh, maybe your grandkids. <laughs> so the, uh, kids are you're encouraging uh, kids to come to this mass. They're all going to well, come together. Uh, first communion. How many did, did you have in your first communion? So I would think if you added St. Mary, St. John's, and Queens all together, there was probably in the area of 80 to 90 first mm -hmm. communicants. But as I like to be the historian at Queens. In uh, 1964, they had 183 just in that parish. Wow. That shows you how things have changed yeah. uh, over these decades as 
the city has become a little well, bit smaller, I, more intimate. Well, I've seen pictures where you've got, like Queens just have like 78 kids in one classroom. Oh, yes. Yeah, for school. Yeah. Is, does your new parish have a church, uh, school? Uh, St. Robert's does have a pre-K through eight, so oh. um, Good Shepherd is just a parish without a school. What's but I think there's approximately 180, 200 kids perhaps in that school. Great. And uh, I, I got a chance to meet the principal and most of the teachers and already visit the classrooms when I was oh. up there a few weeks ago, so that's uh, exciting. St. Robert? St. Robert Bellerman. And you have done the research on this? A uh, doctor of the church, lived in the Renaissance time, or was it the 1600s? A Jesuit, you just know. like the Pope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great defender of the faith <laughs> in the, during the time of the Protestant yeah. Reformation. Did you watch uh, Nora O'Donnell's interview with the Pope last week? I did I not, know. but I've gotten some interesting emails about Have it. You? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back and check that footage so yeah. I find out how to respond. Well, uh, I thought it was interesting because she, she, she was brought up a Catholic and she mentioned that, but what she didn't mention was that she, she didn't mention if she was still, mm. uh, which I thought was, uh, why, why, it was missing. It was I just, think when someone says, I was raised Catholic, they're letting you know, I'm not anymore. Right. Yeah. They went I guess, and found the word somewhere so. else. Yeah. yeah, that'd be my assumption. Hmm, well, based on your outfits. I think you should invite the Pope on here. <laughs> if he'll go on 60 Minutes, he should be on the Bart Holly Show. We'll That's finally right. get to the bottom of we'll all of this. We'll get Nora here. Mm -hmm. I'm sure of that. Uh, and then Queens Legends, uh, it's like the senior golf tour of the parish for uh, senior citizens. The Queens Legends. So we're, you know, much like the youth ministry, we're trying to reach out in Jackson now mm -hmm. to different age groups. And mm -hmm. so... The Legends was probably the first one out of the box. We got all the senior citizens coming together. Now we have a new young adult group in Jackson called uh, Tim412, uh, quoting scripture. And uh, that's really taken off regionally. So that just started a few months ago and they've got 20 people meeting wow. every week doing all kinds of things. Now we've got the youth, uh, but the Legends started it all. The next thing we need to do is start family ministry. So uh, we're going after everybody. You got a lot, lot to do, a lot still to come. And uh, one more time, this Sunday, everyone's uh, welcome at 3 p.m. outdoors. We're outdoors. Oh, yeah. So it's going to start in the gym. Okay. And then we're going to follow Father Brian and Jesus all around the football track. And the then new end Jesus? of the gym and then come back out for the party. All right. Will this be like the dedication of the new Jesus? Uh, we've already dedicated that statue that was, yes, uh, built uh, earlier in the spring. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, very excited to have that statue on site now, especially in our athletic complex. It looks great. You can see it all the way from the road yeah. uh, when you're driving by at night, especially they light it up. So right. we're excited to have one of our altars there. Does it have a nickname? Not yet. Oh, like Touchdown Jesus? <laughs> yeah. I'd love to think of that. All right. Well, we got to go, but come back. And what's the one thing you're going to miss the most about Jackson? Oh, the people, for sure. That's the hardest thing to leave. There's a lot of good people here in this community, so I'll have to be back to visit everybody. Great. Mm. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks, Bart. Thanks for having us. Uh, you're invited Sunday at Lumen Christi. Thanks to Father Tim McDonald and Father Brian Lenz.